So I had the pleasure of discussing at the Texas MPN workshop the, the issue of you know, how early should we be using JAK inhibitors for patients with myeloid fibrosis. Early on in the course of testing these therapies, we started with individuals with intermediate to and high risk disease. And that was somewhat of an arbitrary decision as we did the phase one studies with ruxolitinib or fedratinib or other agents. But over time, we've learned several things. First, that myelofibrosis is a serious disease, and it's serious from people even with, quote, low risk to high risk. It can impact them in terms of symptoms, splenomegaly, you know, and it's really not a benign condition. Secondly, we've acquired a bunch of real-world data that is really relevant to the issue of, quote, earlier myelofibrosis. First, a lot of these patients have begun being treated, uh, either on clinical trials or according to treatment-based guidelines, such as the NCCN guidelines, showing safety and efficacy for the use of, of JAK inhibitors in patients with earlier myelofibrosis. And at this point, most of that data is more ruxolitinib specific in that the clinical trial protocols for fedratinib, pacritinib, mamelotinib still have primarily been more intermediate and higher risk individuals. Another very important real world piece that we have learned is that JAK inhibitors likely impact survival. And this really raises the question about earlier use. Multiple different both real world studies and long term follows from the comfort studies showing that patients on ruxolitinib, particularly if they have responded in terms of splenomegaly, live longer. Why do they live longer? Less debilitation, maybe less risk of progression, maybe less inflammation in the bone marrow microenvironment that may be conducive to disease progression. We've learned with recent data that fedratinib, mamelotinib, uh, likely also impact survival. And I have little doubt as we see data evolve that we will see a similar story with, with pacritinib. So JAK inhibitors impact survival. Now, what about what is early myelofibrosis? For my end, it's a pretty heterogeneous group of, of individuals. If we think about the past DIPSS or IPSS lower risk patients, we recognize that it's a heterogeneous group that may have, some may have higher risk molecular features or other things that by more recent prognostic standards are really higher risk. I think that the NCCN approach of trying to differentiate patients into lower or higher risk, symptomatic versus not symptomatic is relevant. And that anyone who is symptomatic, low risk and above, likely benefits from JAK inhibition. At this point, we're still not quite there knowing whether it makes sense to treat asymptomatic lower risk patients. But I suspect as we learn more about the heterogeneity in the disease, we better understand why patients progress and are better able to track that with either biomarkers or other pieces. I suspect in the end, we will probably end up treating all patients with myelofibrosis over time once we have a further sense of how best to monitor that therapy.